Jason Johnson, politics editor at The Root, and former U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer, Democrat of California. Uh, Jason, let me read you a couple more responses from members of Congress to what Donald Trump said. Ileana Ruslatenin, uh, who is Cuban-American and a congresswoman from Miami, she said the president calling Haiti a s-hole country ignores the contributions thousands of Haitians have made to our South Florida community and nation. Language like that shouldn't be heard in locker rooms and it shouldn't be heard in the White House. One more. CBC chairman uh, Cedric Richmond of Louisiana said, and by the way, Louisiana, whose population largely was drawn from Haiti after Toussaint Louverture uh, overthrew uh, the, the, uh, the Napoleonic government there. President Trump's comments are yet another confirmation of his racially insensitive and ignorant views. It also reinforces the concerns that we hear every day that the president's slogan, Make America Great Again, is really code for Make America White Again. Your thoughts, Jason? Well, Joy, we've been saying this for a long time, and this is another reminder. The president is a white supremacist. Uh, we heard in Charlottesville our president is a terrorist sympathizer, and our president is a clear and present danger to non-white people in America. It's that simple. There's no reason to pretend that that's not what's going on. And what's important about this is not just how his heart feels, because I've never cared about that, and that's not what's important. This manifests in policy. This manifests in judicial policy. This manifests in immigration policy. This manifests in how this administration has dealt with American citizens in Puerto Rico who are dying because they don't consider them to be real Americans. Unless the Democratic Party realizes that this man is an enemy to non-white people in America, and this is not an exaggeration, everything in his rhetoric and policy has said so, we will be in danger as a sovereign nation. We have to recognize that this president has made it abundantly clear since he got into office he does not want to make a space for non-white people to participate. Yes, there are some people who are not white who are in his administration, but policy-wise and rhetoric-wise, he's made it abundantly clear there is no role for brown, tan, yellow, LGBT people in the future that he wants to create in America. And, you know, Senator Boxer, Barb Boxer, um, why are Democrats cutting deals with him? I, I mean, one of the things that is interesting, it was apparently um, yeah, somebody on the Democratic side that leaked this out, what he said. Um, but why are, why are Democrats sitting across the table from somebody who has these views? He said them for a very long time. And why are they cutting deals that include giving in, as Luis Gutierrez just said, giving him even nominal money to right. build a, a wall across the southern border of the United States? Why are Democrats in the room? Well, first of all, we have to save those 800,000 kids, and it shouldn't be related to the wall or anything else. But I just want to say I'm insulted. I am insulted at his remarks as a first-generation American on my mother's side who escaped her family, escaped discrimination and hatred and death. And I just want to say Donald Trump has insulted every American regardless of color. He has insulted my home state, where we have no majority of a particular ethnic color. We all live together in harmony here. So he is anti-American, and this cuts to the core. And yes, I want to save DACA. I don't want to have those 800,000 dreamers sent out, and we should insist it should be a clean bill. He doesn't even know what a clean bill means. But the American people know what it means. You save those dreamers. Why did they come here? Through no fault of their own. Why did my mother's family come here? For hope, opportunity, justice, and fairness. America, all of us are immigrants. So I would say we should all be insulted at this. Yeah, including Donald Trump's family. <laughs> you know, yes. Donald Trump's family uh, came here Thank and, you. and immigrated to this country as well. Jason, you know, you have gone yes. all the way back to the 2013 in CPAC. Donald Trump complained at CPAC that there weren't more European immigrants whom he contrasted with illegal immigrants, quote unquote, that he claimed were voting Democratic. And Trump said, now I say to myself, why aren't we letting in people from Europe? We know his history with well, the Central Park Five. We know he was sued for housing discrimination. His father arrested at a Klan rally. You know, I'll start with you, Jason, on this. This is not an unknown quantity. Americans knew who they were electing. Right. So is the bigger problem not just Donald Trump? I mean, I mean, you know, self-deportation was Mitt Romney's slogan. This is not new. Right. It's not new, Joy. But again, what it speaks to is, remember, as you were commenting before, there are people in his administration who are happy about this. There are people in his administration who are saying, yes, racist white nationalists in the United States of America are happy to hear this. They're happy to hear this unvarnished commentary that Donald Trump wants to create a white nationalist state, that he wants to make sure that non-white, non-Christian people do not have a role in this country. It cannot be said enough. This is a national security threat. 
You don't negotiate with people who sympathize with terrorists. And that's what this president is doing. So I think it's really important. Look, I understand wanting to save the students with DACA, and lots of other people need to be saved. But people need to recognize that this is not a president you can safely negotiate with. He's not going to stop trying to remove non-white people from this country. And unless the opposition party recognizes that and deals with him as such, he's going to get away with it. Yeah, Barb Fox, I'll give you the last one on this. Are Democrats being tough enough on this? I mean, uh, you know, the, your thoughts. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate all the outrage, and I feel it in my heart. But the fact of the matter is, they don't have to negotiate with Donald Trump. They just have to insist that this be attached to the budget bill as a clean bill. They have to tell him that to his face. And when Dianne Feinstein did it, he said, oh, I agree, and he talked about love. I'm sure that his base was in his face and said, don't talk about love when it comes to immigrants. So now he comes out with this. I'll tell you something. The emperor has no clothes at all. Yes, you're right, Joy. We knew it before. But now we have to focus, okay, on making sure we sweep out this one-party rule and focus on 2018, which is what I am doing. Because to watch these Republicans squirm in their seats and roll their eyes, that is not good enough. Yeah. No. Well, very quickly before we go, Senator, if you were in that room, would you now insist, given these remarks that Donald Trump has made, right. that they now attach reversing his rescinding of TPS to El Salvadorans and Haitians and then, then be allowed to stay? Should that be an immediate demand of the Democrats? Yeah. Oh, it should be an absolute demand, an absolute demand. And, and Jason, no question. you're agreeing with that, Jason? Yes, I completely agree with it. People have to recognize who they're dealing with. And look, the emperor does have clothes. They're made off the backs of poor children in other countries that his business ran off of. But we have to recognize that there are other uses for people in this country other than to just be immigrant labor to make things for Donald Trump. We have to recognize that the strength of this country is a multicultural polarity state. He doesn't believe in that, neither does Bannon. And anyone who gives him any space to move forward with that policy is endangering this country. Jason Johnson and Barbara Boxer, thank you both. Really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And still ahead, Reverend Al Sharp.